Okay, so tell us about yourself, where you're from, what your art's like. So I'm Smriti and uh, I'm from India and I moved to London um, almost four years ago. So I've lived in Brent uh, for a few years now and um, I'm a video artist uh, and an educator. I, at the moment, uh, I teach at Camberwell uh, College of Arts. How does Brent inspire you? Uh, Brent is, uh, it's a lovely space to live in uh, and work now that I have, uh, I've had a studio here and grown that community of practitioners. It's diverse, um, it's beautiful in terms of the kind of open spaces um, that public has access to. Uh, especially during the pandemic, I think I've really appreciated that the parks and um, you know uh, open spaces where I've even managed to go and join exercise groups in parking lots and um, yeah, it's a very friendly place and um, it's going to be hard to move from here. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know I won't be able to afford to buy, so it's going to be uh, an eventuality. Mm -hmm. How's Metroland helped you? Metroland has been really great. Uh, I think as somebody that had newly moved to the city uh, and not having studied here and not having a family here, mm -hmm. uh, it took a long time to sort of establish myself in the community. And Metroland has been really crucial in helping with that. Um, you know, I, I suddenly found myself validated. I did get a grant from them before I got the residency. So during the pandemic, when things were just, you know, getting seemingly more difficult, it was just that boost mm -hmm. that was required. And then with the residency and the studio, I think the sense of community that I feel part of some place that I belong uh, has been really, really nurturing and very, very supportive. Amazing. Thank you. I'm here with Lynette. Do you want to introduce yourself, tell us about what you do and your art? Um, yeah, so I'm a what's called interdisciplinary artist. Um, I work with sound, I do things called candy graffiti, as you can see, plants, um, everything around wellness really. So my practice is quite therapeutic and it's about being enjoyable. Amazing. Um, and how would you say Brent inspires you if it does? Um, yes, yeah, so I, I was born in Brent, I went to school in Brent, I still live in Brent, and my studio here is, is in Brent. And yeah, there's never a kind of a dull moment. It's got a very rich history, particularly musically as well. So my parents are from Jamaica and they settled in Harleston in Brent, and that's kind of like the centre of reggae music and all the different genres that have come out of that music um, in, the, in the country and in the United Kingdom. So for me, um, it's inspired me in terms of my work and what I do. I went into sound system culture from a very young age, got behind me here like, like kind of decked mm -hmm. so I still DJ and, and run my sound to this day. And yeah, just everything in terms of the colours, the food, the vibrancy, um, so you've got everyone from all different backgrounds here. So I think that's really rich and kind of reflective of my heritage as well. Amazing. Um, how does Metroland help you as an artist? Well, to create this, you know, have this incredible space, which for me, having it locally as well is wonderful. Um, it's a space that I share as well, so I've got a few other young artists who work with me in this space. And yeah, they've, it's just been supportive in terms of giving me time to think through my ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got an exhibition coming up here as well, which I'm really looking forward to, which they're helping with as well. So, yeah, um, all been well, end of November. Okay. So, yeah, end of November. Awesome, could you share us around your studio a bit and uh, pick out some favourite items? Yeah. One well, of my little plants, so you can probably tell there's a lot of plants in my studio here. So plants are quite a big part of my practice and actually what's called like plant-based living, um, I think it's just fabulous. So I've got my little pineapple plant here. Uh, the virtues of pineapple can never be over overstated. <laughs> and um, what else to pick out? I've got one of my pieces here, which is what I was explaining to you, it's kind of graffiti piece. So um, when I create work, I listen to music. So this one was inspired by 
um, Joan Thomas Rogan's Love and Affection. So all the lyrics are put into that as well. And then behind me, just got some of my, I guess, insp inspiration. Got my little. <laughs> Didn't work. So it's a bit like. Um, that's my carnival horn. <laughs> um, but yeah, just yeah, my plants and yeah, all kind of different bits and pieces to pick out really, I guess. Um, hanging up here, I don't know if you can get to see it, but this is really important to me. Um, it's from Jamaica. Most Caribbean homes will have this in their, it, usually in their kitchen. And um, for me, it's kind of like inspirational in terms of plus like words and just words of advice and stuff so I, I really love that and that's inspired a lot of my, my pieces as well and my studio it just kind of lends itself to being like a kitchen so if you kind of hand around you can see I've got your classic little curtains there as well to lead them through into the kitchenette um, and then the idea is we're going to be having gatherings we're going to be having conversations around food and music and sounds and just the memories it brings to us so that's a bit of a project that I'm doing which is called Recipe for Happy Month. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit more about your upcoming exhibition? Yeah, so it's going to be called House of Joy mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be a bit of an experience. It's going to be a multi sensory concept which is going to seek to uplift through soundscapes, camp graffiti, and plant based um, gatherings which center on wellness. And some of the things that I've been doing with this recipe for Happy Mind mm -hmm. aspect of it is um, a bit called Snacks, Tracks, and Chat, <laughs> where we kind of gather and just have conversations developed by sound system culture, tunes, and what, what they do to us, and um, all accompanied by delicious Caribbean plant based food. And I also will hopefully have a space which is going to be like a child and chill spot as well, where people are going to be kind of experiencing the deep. The vibrations of stuff in there as well, <laughs> and, and some of the lovely tunes that I, that I enjoy playing. So that's kind of a little sneak preview of, of what I'm, I'm planning in this space. Great, could you let the viewers know where to find you on socials? Yeah, if you want to keep up with my practice, you can follow me on mainly on Instagram, so yeah. that's Lynette, L I N E T T underscore K A M A L A, Lynette Kamala. And also, my kind of outreach work is under Linkham Art. So follow me on those social media platforms and you'll find out what I'm doing. Okay, Betty, could you introduce yourself, talk about what you do and your art? Yeah, um, hi, I'm Betty. Um, I live in Kilburn. Um, I work mainly in sculptural installations and recently I've been doing kind of some embroidery type of work. Uh, but my practice is really interested in the relationship between technology, migration and labour. So I finished my MA in Fine Art Digital last year, so kind of in the middle of, of the pandemic. And what you see behind you is what I made for the final show. So it was kind of in January, they were saying, well, what are you going to do? Like your work is so kind of physical, like what, what does that mean for you if it has to be a digital show? And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. So I created these pieces and a whole lot more that isn't on the wall and I installed it in the flat that I live with my partner. <laughs> and so we had it all in the living area and we were just living with it for seven days. And so that was kind of what ended up being my final show, kind of the, the interaction of these pieces in our space. So with these pieces, they kind of start off with a digital image and the way they've been created is um, using an artificial intelligence program. So what the program does is it takes um, two different images and kind of creates a hybrid third image. So I'm using the, um, the program as a way to explore kind of the, that tension between chance and control. So I've got full control over what goes into the process and then but then kind of it, the, the distillation of the image is completely up to the, the algorithm. And then I'm kind of in, I'm, I'm thinking about like unconscious bias. So these things that kind of are fed in but they're kind of broken up in the process, so you only see fragments of what existed. So, um, so the program is called a style transfer program. So you can obviously use it in a very. Um, so it's it's the the research that sits behind a lot of those filters and apps that mm -hmm. kind of make your photo look like a you know Monet painting yeah. or not. Um, so you can use it in a very figurative way, but I'm using it to kind of break the image. So I'm kind of thinking about kind of erasure and kind of self representation through that process. And then I take it 
into kind of a 3D form as a reference to the embodied experience. So, and I found that the textiles was a really good um, material to use because of the flexibility of it. So all these pieces kind of bend into different shapes. So there's, there's wiring to them. So they can be shown in lots of different um, guises. So I've installed this work in Hampstead Heath, so kind of like wrapped mm. around a tree. So these are on a wall, but yeah, they can kind of like, so it's the idea is that whichever space they're in, they kind of adapt to and kind of like meld into. And again, back to kind of the idea of migration and identity. So um, the series is called the Interpreter Series. So that's a reference to um, kind of a, a lot of ch children, uh, migrant children's experience of being their parents' interpreter. So um, that was my experience. Um, so I'm Chinese. Uh, we migrated to Australia when I was uh, two, and then I migrated here about um, 10 years ago. Since I've been at Metroland, I've been able to work on some really large scale works, which um, has been amazing um, because I was working at home before that. So just having a studio this size is just fantastic. And having kind of the technical support as well is, is really, has been really, really helpful. Um, right now, I'm working on some pieces with a gallery called uh, Unit London. I did um, a video piece of them that was an NFT a couple of weeks ago, and kind of the larger pieces of embroidery is, is what I'm working on for an online show I have with them next year. What's your thoughts on NFT? Um, so I think it's a great way for digital artists to make a living. Um, but I think, unfortunately, you've had a lot of people jump onto the bandwagon, mm -hmm. people who kind of are so far from that digital space, kind of like your Damien Hurthers, your NFL players, all these people kind of jumping on. So they're kind of the, the people who do make really interesting work. They're kind of like lost in the noise, I think. OK, away from a figurative space and into a literal space, how does Brent inspire you if it does? Um, so I so I found myself in Brent um, because I moved in with my partner in order to be able to do um, the MA. Uh, so I had a whole other career before I did this. Um, we can get into that later. But um, but since then, since last year, I've been volunteering at the local primary school, so Kilburn Grange Primary. Um, and it's just so wonderful working with children because I think when you kind of come up with ideas of, of activities for you to for them to do you kind of in your mind think you know what it's going to be but then they just go completely off piss and it's just amazing right and, and and I find that really inspiring and I think I want to try to capture a bit of that um in my own work where you kind of can maintain that kind of thinking outside the expected I guess um mm -hmm. I think that's what we all kind of lose as we go through you know, the schooling system and, and stuff, and it's particularly what I studied before, like it was very kind of, this is it, there's no other way. Um, so I find, yeah, working them really, really inspiring. So uh, maybe beyond the studio, how has Metroland helped you as an artist? Uh, well, it's just been great being in a studio space with other artists yeah. and other artists that I admire, um, their work and kind of their opinion. Yeah, like I think that's what we all kind of sorely missed last year kind of like working from home and kind of in and out of lockdown but just having that kind of sense of community is just so so lovely like Lynette and I have been in discussions on doing collaboration next year together so it's just like being able to meet with artists that you might not necessarily meet with and kind of we're all at various um, stages of our career so it's just it's amazing. Um, do you want to talk about what you were doing before? Oh, the career, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Um, it, it's, I guess it's all, it's all linked back to kind of, I guess, like what I'm interested in. So I actually studied um, commerce and information systems at university, which is basically like business here. Um, and I, straight out of university, I had a job um, with an Australian um, investment bank, but I wasn't, I wasn't a banker, I was just like support. Um, <laughs> And then, and then I wanted to quit. And so basically, after every every job, I've lasted about two years. And then I, but I could never really leave. Like I tried to leave, and then I just found myself back in another bank. And that happened about 
four times where I just thought this is just going to keep <laughs> happening if you don't like really make a change. And then kind of over the um, leading up to that, I was doing a lot of short courses, um, mainly at Central St. Martin's, kind of, you know, like drawing, painting, interior design, 3D modeling, like, you know, ceramic, every, I kind of like had tried a bit of everything. And then I thought, well, so the, the, so the timing was right. I'd got my permanent residency, so it meant I could like actually study. And so that's what I've done. And then, um, so, yeah. So can you tell us about any upcoming projects? Um, so I'm arranging a week long of workshops with the uh, children at Children in the Grange Primary School. Uh, so they'll be coming in for the days um, and they'll be given access to a range of different materials, so 2D, 3D materials and they'll be showing the gallery space we've got downstairs and they'll be asked to kind of respond to the space and the time and the um, materials that they've um, got. So it's kind of like Kind of a mini like what it's like to be an artist and, mm -hmm. and kind of just like working with within kind of like time constraints and, and, and scale and um and kind of technical constraints as well so they'll come in make the work and then we'll install the work while they go back to school for lunch and then they'll come <laughs> back and then we'll kind of like see the exhibition oh. together and then they'll be invited to talk about their work so um that should be a lot of fun and, and so we've got year three four and five coming in november to do that amazing uh where can we find you on socials and see more of your art uh so my insta is betty.learn l-e-u-n-g dot art and i've got a website and it's uh betty learn my full name dot uk amazing thank you, thank <laughs> well you. <remembered. laughs>